Now, this feud has been due in large part to the constant interference of Sheik Adnan El Casey. But what a way missing Commissioner Jim Brunzel came up with to ensure that the Sheik would not interfere. That's right. The Sheik is handcuffed to one of my heroes, Sergeant Slaughter. That way, the Sheik can't interfere. And just as we left the air last week in the middle of the third round, suddenly the devious Mr. Fuji appeared at ringside. Let's take you back to that third round where we pick up all the action. Ladies and gentlemen, when we left you last week in the midst of round three, there he appeared, Mr. Fuji, the man whose interference led to the championship committee calling for this rematch between Tito Santana and Cowboy Bob Horton. Sheik Adnan LKC already handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter in the corner, but now the cards stacked against Tito Santana. Let's take you back to last week. He has not been honorable since the day he was born. Wow, he, look he, at that from Bob Orton. Absolutely, in for the cover, count of one. Oh, a kick out by Santana. It is very clear, it is very obvious, and once again, Mr. Fuji has something in mind. There's a plot here, I'm sorry, I don't trust the man for a minute. That's a common misception. Everybody calls him devious. He is not, he is a student of professional wrestling. Look at these moves by Bob Orton. We're looking over the shoulder of Mr. Fuji, and I've got to believe Sergeant Slaughter now better have eyes like a housefly. They better be looking all over the place, not only having to contend with Sheik, but also that man, Mr. Fuji. Get another set of handcuffs, get some chains, get something. Why are you keeping on a Fuji? He's a nice fellow. Now look at this beautiful uh, figure four headlock that Bob Orton has upon Santana. Now that is a really fine wrestling move. It absolutely is a basic wrestling move and Mr. Fuji obviously pleased. And there, that signature Bob Orton drilling that forearm right across the chest with authority. Wait a second, that time Santana almost instinctively raising that right fist and he caught Bob Orton right in the jaw. Fuji is absolutely stopped and now perhaps the momentum can shift here Santana trying to get to a vertical base. That was a very, very quick move by Santana there. Caught Bob Orton right on the hop as he came in with a beautiful right-handed fist. I have to take my hat off to Santana. This man is striving to get that championship and striving very hard indeed. Well, he has the heart of a champion. There's no question. Hammering Orton with rights and lefts and drills him head first to the canvas. And now it is all Tito Santana here. Look at the concerned look. The expression on the mug of Mr. Fuji. Well, the pendulum has swung in the favor of Santana. In fact, Bob Orton backing off for the very first time in this match. We are down to almost 20 seconds here as Santana continues to hammer on into that top turnbuckle. The fans picking up the cadence. And now Tito Santana, we're down to the, to the waiting seconds. And Orton actually fell face first into that lower turnbuckle. Bob Orton has to do something to pull this one out of the bag here because at the moment Santana is really waging a tremendous battle against Orton. Drops down on the oh, inside. That's not right. That once well, again. Santana cheating, hit him off to the belt. Well, I'm not so sure that it's cheating. It's the intensity, that fire burning in Tito Santana. And I'm not so sure how you're going to score that one on points. I know how I'm going to score it. Definitely for Bob Orton. Maybe just a tiny margin, but definitely for Bob Orton. I'm not sure the referee will agree with me. Well, as referee Billy Silverman gets set to fill out his scorecard, and the judges, Edward Nussbaum, and of course, Dr. William Crouch, they may see it a little bit differently. Ladies and gentlemen, this one is scheduled for 12 rounds, the championship of the world. Stay with us, we're coming right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the championship of the world as Sergeant Slaughter keeps a close eye on Sheik Adnan El Casey, pulling in on those handcuffs, making it very clear to the Sheik he's not going anywhere. There goes Sergeant Slaughter poking his nose in a game where it's not wanted. Well, I disagree with that. I certainly want it there. So do the wrestling fans. And at the conclusion of the previous round, in my estimation, it was all Tito Santana. You've got that wrong. It was all Cowboy Bob Orton. He really has taken control of uh, this match. I don't know what in the world you're looking at, but at any Bo rate... Bo oh, Bo be Bo quiet Bo for heaven's sakes. That man has a voice Bo like a, a foghorn. Sergeant Slaughter keeping his eyes on Mr. Fuji as well. I wish he'd mind his own business and sit down. Well, you better not give that a boy, Sarge. Put the sheet down in the chair where he belongs. 
Sergeant Slaughter has to keep an eye on everybody in the building, for heaven's sakes. The referee there explaining to uh, Tito Santana where he's gone wrong, where he keeps on taking advantage of uh, cheating. That, that, that's just ridiculous, but I'm not going to argue with you. The championship of the world in the American Wrestling Federation. All the marbles on the line. Oh, look at that. That was a sucker shot from Cowboy Bob Orton, and the Sheik loves it. Look at that diabolical grin, that laugh from the Sheik. And now it's Bob Orton going into that boxing stance, and he levels Tito Santana. And he makes every one of those mm. punches tell to the maximum effort. He really is a spectacular wrestler, Bob Orton. And Tito Santana has done very, very well indeed to last this long with him in the ring. Well, I disagree with that, but I agree with the assessment, the wrestling skills of Cowboy Bob Orton. He is a great one, there's no question about it. The Sheik nodding his approval from the outside as Orton drills Santana with a boot to the head and a second time. They're heavy blows to the head, they're taking their toll. Santana now, he cannot get up. I don't know how he's going to be able to... That's it, Sarge. Put the bad mouth on him. You know, you look at the expression on Sergeant Slaughter, I think he's had about enough of the Sheik. Now look at this. Bob Orton getting ready to pin Santana. One, two, One, two three. Oh. oh, that was close. That was very close indeed. Very, very close. And just a minute now, I'm looking off to my right here and approaching the ring, the members of the Rat Pack, the remaining members, Mr. Remember. Hughes and Maniac Manny Fernandez. Now are you going to tell me that they have managerial licenses too? No, but they're just interested spectators. Um, After all, this is a championship belt that has drawn the eyes of the whole world to it. Why should they have a very, very good bird's eye view of it right from the front there? Well, they should buy a ticket like everybody else. They're way too close to the ring. As Bob Orton chokes Tito Santana, the referee now literally out onto the floor to break that up in Orton and Mr. Hughes exchanging pleasantries there. Maniac Manny Fernandez, again, in my estimation, this guy... Oh, my heavens. He's looking at you. I wouldn't be oh. in your shoes for anything. I don't like that Mr. one Starch. bitch. Don't start with the start business. Bob Orton now methodical as he is, well, in my estimation, certainly taking an awful lot of time here. This the is what is called systematic destruction, the Bob Orton way. Look at him. He's testing the firepower now of Tito Santana. And Santana can't make any effect whatsoever with those right hands. Well, Tito Santana has taken some pounding here in this round. And again, this is cat and mouse now on the part of Bob Orton. There's no doubt about that. Picks up Santana now. Santana is fighting for his very life there. He's trying to hang on to the ropes as Orton. Oh, oh wow, what a damaging blow there by Bob Orton. Brought his chest down on that top rope. Oh. And that's a steel rope inside that plastic covering. And we are down, ladies and gentlemen, 25 seconds remaining in this round. And Bob Orton continues to take apart Tito Santana with those short shots to the jaw. The crowd against solidly behind Tito, but at this point in time, it does not look good. It certainly doesn't, because Tito Santana is flat on his back. Oh. Bob Orton just above him. One, one two, we got a three. Oh. Oh, that was close as the round comes to a conclusion. Orton says that was a three count. Referee Billy Silverman says it was two. And now, what about that cheap shot? Which one? I didn't see that. Well, pay Tremendous attention. Tremendous perseverance there on the part of Tito Santana to really stay in this belt because I definitely, for one, thought he was finished uh -oh. then. Wait a minute now, Sergeant Slaughter. Good for you, Sarge. Cock that fist. What in the world? You know, you've got Mr. Hughes out there. You've got Maniac Manny Fernandez, Sheik Adnan LKC, Mr. Fuji. Why don't they just invite half of the half of Iraq and Japan and everybody else in there? The cards are so stacked against Tito Santana. And look at this. Oh, Bob Orton taking it nice and Hang easy. Hang on to him. Hang what? on to him, Sarge. There's no need to. He's not doing anything. He's just out standing there shouting encouragement and maybe a little we advice to him. Too. We well, as we look at Mr. Hughes, I know Sergeant Slaughter would just as soon wrap the chain around the throat of, of the Sheik. You know, they have a history. No love lost there. Oh, Sheik, don't push your luck. Oh, oh, don't push your luck. We are into round five, scheduled for 12 rounds. The American Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Championship of the World at State. And I think once again, that was another Bob Orton round. Really, I can't see Tito Santana surviving this I mean, he's got four minutes to go through in this particular round, and I don't think he's going to do it. Well, oh, as he 
absolutely hung him on that lower rope strand. That boomerang went over and Tito, I agree with you, your lordship. He's in a world of trouble right now. And look at that, Tito Santana clutching at another straw, putting his foot up on the rope. And that's a dangerous position. Wait a minute. He's going to come down and crush him. Oh, there's that body block from the top. Wait a second, Santana's leg, of course, straight across that lower rope strand. Count of one and two. Oh, that was close. Once again, Tito Santana with nine lives in this one. But there is the dedication, the heart, and the tenacity of a champion in Tito Santana. He's really in great shape, Tito Santana, because he's taken a great deal of punishment each round, and yet he's still there, and possibly with a chance, too. What do you mean, possibly with a chance? Of course he's got a chance. In my estimation, Tito Santana is still the champion of the world. Well, he's very, very defensive. I haven't seen much of his offense for the last two or three rounds. Mm. It's been all Bob Orton on the attack and all on defense for Tito Santana. Look at oh. him his nose again. No, the Sheik again pointing a finger at Sergeant Slaughter. There's a cross face and attempt there. Oh, and there's a forearm right across the bridge of the nose. You said it best, Your Lordship. Everything that Bob Orton does is high impact and with authority. And he has been drilling Tito Santana. Wait a minute. There's a block and a shot of his own. And now Santana attempting to get something going here. He hammers him again. And I believe he's hurt. Bobo. Bobo now he's staggering. Oh. He's reeling on his feet, but he's coming back at him. We've got a slugfest going on here. Orton drills him with the board. Oh, wait a second. He's setting up an attempted pile driver here, but over the top with the back body drop. Oh, oh Santana. He's on the pump of Chico Santana. He's singling. Oh, wait a second. He he's went for the flying burrito and he hit the referee. Uh -huh. Resurgence of energy here. Of all the luck, Pito Santana ready with that flying burrito. The referee is knocked almost unconscious there on the canvas. A reversal. Santana now. Wow, he dropped him down with that swinging neck breaker. Tito is in for the cover. Come on, referee. Come on. Well, 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 Charles, they're back down. But I believe he can raise them. Shoot the referee. He is out. How can he raise them? The man is absolutely out. Well, that is what Tito Santana doing all the time raising his shoulders once again come up he's behind him oh wait a second from behind us tito was attending the referee billy silverman and it's all broken loose now orton hammering santana in the corner but tito turns around sergeant slaughter engaged in an argument there which she got on lkc there's a rake of the eyes count a one and two his feet are on the wall count of three what i don't believe this come on referee Ladies and gentlemen, we're back. I'm still shaking my head. I can't believe it. The concluding moments here. Tito Santana inadvertently nailing referee Billy Silverman with the flying burrito. The referee is down and out. Tito into that swinging neck breaker on Cowboy Bob Orton. And your lordship, clearly, Orton is out. Not a joke, not a joke. He could have raised his shoulders there any time he wished had the referee been on target. The referee wasn't. And here it is, a clear one, two, three, which makes a new champion. Well, Bob Orton's feet were on the ropes. The referee didn't see it. Sergeant Slaughter on the outside, distracted with Sheik and not LKC. Again, how many times does Tito Santana have to be robbed of the championship of but the world? But there's no going oh. back. The referee's decision was final. Once he makes that count, one, two, three, there is a new champion. And that happens to be to your displeasure, but it's Bob Orton. Well, it is to my displeasure. In the ring right now, the Rat Pack. Ken Resnick has the pleasure of talking to the new world champion, Bob Orton. I'm here with Sheik Adnan El Casey, Maniac Manny Fernandez, Mr. News, and Cowboy Bob Orton. Talk about our Fuji's Rat Pack. Fuji's taunting Tito there. Bob Orton, Consoling even him. you can't be pleased with the way you won this world championship. 20 years. 20 years after winning the Florida title, after being a world tag team champion, 
I finally got the big one, baby. Uh, he stole it. Before. He's happy. How He's can happy. you be pleased the way you won this title? I won it. Ken Resnick with a pinball. A pinball with his feet on the ropes uh, for Commissioner Christ. Jim Brunzel. What Wait is it, Jim? Wait a second. Yeah, what's up? What's going on? What is that? The match is not over. The match is not over. As everyone saw, the referee did miss a pinfall, and he was in no condition to finish this match. So first of all, I want you, I want you, and I want Fuji, who have no business being here at all, out of the ring. All right, Jim. Oh, no. All right, Jim. That's a conspiracy by Don't the establishment. Good for Jim Brunzel. But Jim, you're saying the match isn't over. The match is not over. That is wrong. It's not I'm wrong not Casey. I know he has authority, but he's using it in the wrong direction. El Manuel Casey will be re-handcuffed to Sergeant Slaughter right now. All right. And Jesse Hernandez in there. Apparently, they're restarting this one. What is that? Oh, the Sheik is living. Well, oh, I should imagine, so I am. Yeah, right. I'm shocked. What happened to a one, two, Absolutely. Everyone, the commissioner, saw your legs up on their own. Well, Bob Wharton is upset. Wait a minute. The Sheik is ranting and raving about it. As I see it, Mr. Wharton, this match will continue with round six with a new referee appointed. There you have it, on the wrong A six. new referee, how can they do that? They can do it because it's the right thing to do. The Sheik can cry all he wants to. Sarge has the key. Oh, Sarge is loving this. Well, I don't worry, Bob Orton will win the title again. Well, maybe he, he will. twice, he will do it. Well, as Jim Brunzel consoles the previous referee, Billy Silverman, Tito Santana, struggling to get to his feet on the outside of the ring, the championship match is going to continue. A great call by Jim Brunzel. That's the look of a doomed man climbing back into the ring. And, and a look of determination and resolve on the face of Cowboy Bob Orton as he prepares to bring Santana in over the top with that suplex. Back into the ring and they're going, no! Wait a second! Wait a minute! Tito in from a... He got him! He got him! This one is over! This one is all over! Tito Santana American Wrestling Federation champion. Here's the Sarge in the ring. Well, that is definitely not right. As I said before, it's a conspiracy by the establishment to get Bob Orton out of the way. Well, I don't think there's any conspiracy. I think that justice was well served here as the wrestlers flood the ring. What are they doing now? They are congratulating the champion of the world, Tito Santana, on a well-earned victory. Well, I can't see any cause for a celebration there. That was a wicked and cruel thing oh, to do to Bob Orton. Wait a minute. He's threatening Jim Brunzel. You don't want to do that. The celebration continues in the ring. She can not LPC was rendered absolutely ineffective here by Sergeant Slaughter's presence. Even Mr. Fuji sticking his nose in. All kinds of interference. Well, I'm not very happy with that decision. I think I'll contest this with Professor Einstein. You're not contesting it with anybody. Tito Santana, the champion. Stay with us, we're coming back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. A euphoric crowd in attendance as we take you to the concluding moments of the championship matchup. Vertical suplex there by Cowboy Bob Orton. He attempts the pinfall, but a brilliant, great find of the legs by Tito Santana. But look at this controversial pinfall here. Look, Bob Orton's shoulder clearly up. Ladies and gentlemen, standing by at ringside right now, Ken Resnick with the new champion of the world, Tito Santana. I'm standing with new world champion, Tito Santana. Tito, congratulations. A mighty, mighty close call. Thank you very much, Ken. It was a long, hard battle. 
But thanks to all these fans that never gave up on me. Cowboy Bob Borden, I'm finished with you once and for all. Tito, tell me what you were feeling up until the point that Mr. Jim Rodgell came out and ordered the match restarted. Did you know that Bob Orton had his feet up on the rope? I had no idea what had happened. I was so tired. I was so hurt. And then my friend, Sergeant Slaughter, came up and told me, Tito, the commissioner's out there. This may not be over for you. I got my second win. Cowboy Bob Borden, it was tough. But I knew it was going to be tough. But knowing that I didn't have to worry about that no good heading on LKC on the outside. Thank you, Sergeant Slaughter, for this victory. I owe it to you, my friend. Tito, there's any doubt you know how the fans feel about it. I love the fans. I couldn't do it without it, Tito. Arriba! New AWF World Champion, Tito Santana. Tito, congratulations. Thank you, baby. Thanks, Ken, and congratulations to Tito Santana, still AWF heavyweight champion. Speaking of champions, I have here Rico Suave, the manager of the AWF tag team champions. Now that's a team. That's right, and I have a couple of questions for you. First off, who are your next opponents? And number two, where are your champions? Well, let me, let me, let me tell you something. You know, the, the tag team scene here in the AWF is hot and heavy. It's a serious business, Missy. Serious. Well, who are your next opponents? I heard Siegfried and Roy was number one. No, what about the Road Warriors? I heard Brooks and Dung were number two. No, I'm talking about Hawk and Animal, the Road Warriors. Hawk and Animal. Hawk and The only Hawk and Animal I know live in the Bronx Zoo with the crazy haircut. Okay, okay, well, then where are your champions? They're on my yacht. They're relaxing. You know, they work hard every day. They train. They lift. They got to sit in the sun to keep those bodies nice and bronze and tan because the girls all love them. So I got them relaxing right now. You know, they the deserve it. The only thing I'm getting out of here is that you blow dry your chest hair. I can't take this anymore. Let's, let's go to Mick and Lord Alfred. This next contest well, thank you very much, Missy Hyatt. That was last week. This is now, ladies and gentlemen, the American Wrestling pounds. Federation Warriors Wait, of Wrestling. Marcello. Lord Alfred Hayes, you've had one week to get over it. Are you still pouting? Well, I'm not exactly pouting, but I have been trying to chase down Jim Ronzel and Professor Einstein, but no response from either of them. Well, they're not going to respond to you, I guarantee you. And ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to take a look at a man who has some real serious anti-American sentiment, real hatred, particularly for Sergeant Slaughter. That is Fidel Sierra coming to the ring with Capitana Natasha. Well, when you talk about serious, this man is a serious threat to anybody who steps into the ring with him. And I don't see the new world champion, Tito Santana, replying to his challengers. Well, I guarantee you in due time, Tito Santana will be a fighting champion. He's never backed down from a challenge in his life. And I guarantee you he won't back down from Fidel Sierra coming into the ring of the crowd livid as they take a look at this man. Well, Tito Santana might back down to him. Natasha waving that flag, that Cuban flag. The crowd hanging up the chant of USA, USA. Stay with us, everybody. We're coming right back at you. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, and while we were in break, Fidel Sierra obviously incensed at the crowd, chanting for Sergeant Slaughter, picking up the USA chant. He attacked young Marcelo. He has not let up since. The referee wants this one over and done with. Sierra has been disqualified. Well, he was a little eager there. Oh, He's very eager. keen to get to grips with his adversaries. Come and yes, on. he was affected by the chant from the crowd. The referee has disqualified him. He continues on with the Castro sleeper. This guy is amazed. He's possessed, for heaven's sake. Well, he's not happy with that decision being disqualified. Why should a referee do that? He could have warned him. And why this? Why Capitana Natasha draping the flag over the prone body of young Marcel? A little humiliation is good for the soul. Wait a minute. Yeah, Slaughter Santana, you don't care. You will care, Fidel Sierra. This man is 
This is sadistic at best. Well, I don't see either of Sergeant Slaughter or Tito Santana climbing into the ring to take him on. Oh, they will. They will in due time. Look at them. Just staring down, glaring. The referees told him to wake up Marcelo. Well, that's a way to wake a guy up. Kick him in the head. Well, I tell you something. Mike Marcelo brought this upon himself because he didn't obey the first rule of wrestling. Professional wrestling states that once you come into the arena, or for that matter, the ring, you, you watch your opponent at all times. Wrestling! Yeah, 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 great. Well, whatever you said, I disagree with it. There's a... Oh, no, we gotta have her two cents in. Capitana Natasha, poor Mike Marcello. You talk about the rules of professional wrestling. How about the rule that says, wait until the bell rings to start the match? What about that rule? Well, that doesn't mean to say the referee can disqualify the wrestler. Well, at any rate, ladies and gentlemen, this was the entrance of Fidel Sierra along with Capitana Natasha. He did not wait. This is what took place during the break. He attacks young Mike Marcello. And that clubbing forearm, that was the beginning of the end. Well, he was a little over-eager to get to action then, but he cannot wait to get to grips with any adversary at all. Well, he certainly has the grip right there. That Castro sleeper, the referee at this point has decided that's enough. Fidel Sierra disqualified, and this is absolute insult to injury here as they drape the flag over the broad body of young Mike Marcello. Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. You're watching the Warriors of Wrestling with the American Wrestling Federation. We're coming right back. The American Wrestling Federation, I love it. The round system, I love it. The fans, I love them. And I'm up next. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've just witnessed Fidel Sierra in action. Escucho. Eso es para mi amigos cubanos solamente. Este hombre, Fidel Sierra, is un campeón del mundo ahora. Whatever he said. Ladies and gentlemen, let's toss it to our ring announcer, Walt Marsicano. That's Maraschino. When are you going to get his name right? I get it right. It's you who get it wrong. Well, it's Walt Marsicano. And what are you doing Spanish all of a sudden? Well, because I like to speak to our Spanish people who listen to us. This well, is uh, professional wrestling the way it should be. And I think they should be also informed about what is happening. And when you're talking about professional wrestling the way it should be, here's a man who knows it backwards and forwards from Stratford on Avon in England. Once again, I tell you, a fellow countryman of yours, Gentleman Chris Adams. Well, he is a commoner, but I must say this for him. He has a very good knowledge of professional wrestling. This man is an artisan. Well, he is that, and I guarantee you that Butch Long in the ring right now is going to feel the effect of Gentleman Chris Adams. This man so adapted to the American Wrestling Federation round system, of course, the European round system brought to the United States by the American Wrestling Federation. He's a master craftsman in that ring, and I guarantee you Butch Long is going to learn in short order just how good Chris Adams is. Now, I must agree with everything you said there. Very innovative, the American Wrestling Federation. We've taken everything to excellent heights, and I must also point out this is not this is not an infomercial for an upcoming cable show or something this is professional wrestling the way it should be absolutely and that was a forearm the way it should be and very quickly you know you talk about the popularity of the american wrestling federation hello to our good friends out in the bay area in san francisco on kbhk television our friend margaret powers a great fan of professional wrestling and in tampa florida on the other side of the country watching a wtmb intermedia communications barbara sampson and david ruberg thanks for all the kind words all great people that you mentioned meanwhile look at uh, chris adams here the whole mark of a great wrestler is to go back to that very hole hot that you had before wear your man down absolutely that side headlock is a real punishing hold it's not necessarily going to put the lights out for somebody, but it's going to take its toll, and here's a man who takes his toll as well. Big Mama just got done parking my 18-wheeler out back, and there was no parking spot, so she just ran over the cars. But it sounds like Tito Santana and Sergeant Slaughter are scared of the bully. Well, you're scared of Big Mama. Tell him, bully. 
Well, I would be scared of Big Mom, I'll tell you that. I'd be scared of both of them, quite honestly. And I can't blame Sergeant Slaughter or Tito Santana for avoiding the issue oh, there. they're not avoiding the issue at all. The blacktop bully a force to be reckoned with, but Sergeant Tito don't avoid anybody. Back to the action in the ring. Gentleman Chris Adams maintaining that side headlock on Butch Long. Whipped off the ropes now. Oh, punching shoulder tap. And that was a forceful one, too. He's very, very... Light on his feet, to Chris Adams, oh. yet heavy with his blows. A great series of moves into that arm drag takedown, and now he's got Butch Long in real trouble right here. Well, Long is in a short arm lever there. I'm and not sure why the referee called for the break there. No, I'm not sure either. Quite honestly, I don't know that one. The referee does. He saw something that obviously went against the rules. Chris what? Adams beautifully pointed. Oh. What happens? <laughs> in for the cover, count of one and two. And how in the world did Butch Law kick out from that? Well, he did. He's quite resilient, this young man. However, Adams, I believe, has got himself. Oh, super kick. I thought I saw teeth flying all over the place. Count of one, two, lights out. That is it. Gentlemen, Chris Adams, right to the jaw of Butch Law. Well, Chris Adams took us to a wrestling clinic just then with all those superb moves. This man is absolutely great. The fans in attendance very appreciative of Chris Adams' talent from Stratford on Avon, the gentleman himself. You can see the way he comes out and he's full of confidence and the oh, super kick. Oh, 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 right to the jaw. What accuracy. What time. And poor Butch Long went right for his teeth to make sure that they were all there. Gentlemen, Chris Adams, tremendously impressive. I don't know if Butch Long is going to be get, going to the dentist, if he's going to wake up this week. We're back to the ring, and it is time to play ball, your lordship. It certainly is. You're in short, you're going to see a most innovative young man who lives another peculiar style of life. Well, he certainly does that as we take a look at Billy the Kid, a little peculiar, I guess, in his own right. But that's not the man we're talking about. Wait until you take a look at this. I know that George Steinbrenner, our good friend, has already considered offering this man a contract. Well, it's our first time to view him. And there's the announcement. The MVP. The MVP, ladies and gentlemen. Would you take a look at that? That appears to be a uh, Chicago... Oh, oh, get out of the way. A Chicago White Sox uniform, I would imagine. I'm not going to get close enough to ask him here. No, well, we both ducked when he swung that bat just then. You can never trust this fellow. I was speaking to him a little while ago in the dressing room, and I'm afraid he intimidated me far too much to have a long conversation with him. Oh, he's going right after the ring ropes there with that baseball bat. That looks to be about a, a 36 ouncer there. He is... He is a very large individual. I didn't get the weight, but I would guess him to be in the 275, 280 pound range. I would imagine he's well over six foot six. He's probably six seven or six eight. And I'm afraid he's going to tower above Billy the Kid, who does show remarkable grit for getting into the ring with the MVP. Well, he certainly does that as the MVP gets ready to do battle here. Very unique individual. I'm not sure I'm taking a look at his shoes, making sure there's not steel cleats at the bottom there. He was swinging that baseball bat like, uh, for heaven's sakes, like Harmon Killebrew. And Billy the Kid had better get out of the way here. He'd better be agile and on the top of his game. I think so. This is our first look, mind you, at MVP, so we don't really know what he's capable of. But he does look very self-possessed in the ring. He has a lot of confidence, and he does quite honestly intimidate oh, everybody who meets him. Well, there's no doubt about that. Drilled into the top buckle. And speaking of intimidating individuals, you know, I was in seventh heaven at that Cauliflower Alley convention, the great names in the history of professional wrestling, all talking about the American Wrestling Federation, the likes of Bob Gagne, Jack Frisco, Terry and Dory Funk, Harley Race, Bruno San Martino, each to a man speaks in nothing but glowing terms about the AWF, and I was very, very proud. Me too. I sat there with a stupid grin upon my face because they were all all talking about the AWM, and of course, that is about me. Well, it's sort of about you. What about me? I'm just not meat and potatoes sitting here. Back to the action in the ring, ladies and gentlemen. The MVP, certainly with an all-out aggressive style here, to say the least. Billy the Kid can absolutely not get any offense going. Oh, halfway across the ring. No, he has really surprised me.
me the MVP. He has unleashed upon Billy the Kid some beautiful manoeuvres. Oh. His time is his timing is really excellent. Well, there was a boot to the sternum as he came off the ropes, and a big elbow there for good measure. You know, I'm not so sure the fans in attendance know what to make of the MVP. Some of the crowd is cheering him. Others are disgusted by this all-out assault here. Very unique, to say the least. Well, I think he's being cheered simply because he's so masterful in the ring, and he's executed really good moves. Well, Billy the Kid tried to fight back there with some shots to the midsection. Had no effect whatsoever. Back body drop. And now the MVP, very, very confident, almost stalking his man, parading around the ring here. He's in no hurry. He feels he has this match well in hand. Well, he looked at us both then as much as to say, I know what I'm doing. I'll finish this All match whenever I please. And obviously it doesn't please him yet to finish it. But I bet he will do it. Well, that was a big body slam there. This is a powerful man. And again, walking around the ring, talking to the referee as if he were talking to an umpire there. He There's picks his spots, huh? Oh. And you see that boot just above the heart? That's a very, very vulnerable place to be hit. Billy the Kid struggling just to stay on his feet. And there he's got him in what he calls, you're out of here. And I have to believe that that is exactly what's going to happen here with Billy the Kid. Nowhere for this young man to go. What is that called? You're out of here. What an expression. Well, it looks like Billy the Kid is definitely out of here. Out of everywhere, as a matter of fact. Maybe in another world. Well, I have the feeling that the MVP was trying to make a statement here and let the powers that be in the American Wrestling Federation know he's for real. He could have finished this young man off a long time ago. Extremely impressive, most awesome, and I would rather call him an intimidator rather than MVP, but my word, what a performance here. Oh, now this is absolutely unnecessary. The match clearly over. He dropped the boot right between the shoulder blades. Very proud of himself. This monstrous MVP, look at that expression. Looks a bit like Dracula, the, oh, does he not? Oh, he is scary, frightening, carrying that piece of lumber with him. You can't trust this guy as far as you can throw him, and I know I can't throw him an inch. Oh, look at him just whacking those steel ropes with a baseball bat. And look at that face, and that is a perfectly aimed kick to revive his opponent. Well, I'm not sure he was reviving him or making sure he was going to the hospital there. There it is. You're out of here. As the referee signals for the bell, the MVP certainly made a statement, and I, again, contend that at any point from about the first minute on, he could have disposed of Billy the Kid. I think so. I like that term. You're out of here. Oh, and look at this as he was Ooh, approaching I'm out our, of here. Let's go. Oh, oh, get out of the way. The MVP, ladies and gentlemen, his debut here in the American Wrestling Federation, and I guarantee you, opponents, officials, they're taking notice of the MVP. Stay with us, ladies and gentlemen. We're coming back. Get out of the way. Welcome back, wrestling fans, to what truly has been a history-making week. In the American Wrestling Federation, we showed you Tito Santana once again climbing to the top of the ladder, the heavyweight champion of the world in the American Wrestling Federation. And as we take a look at it, in case you missed it earlier on, here's the concluding moments of the match. Tito inadvertently nailing the referee with that flying burrito. And some brilliant moves there by Tito Santana at the end of this match practically brought him a victory that nobody else suspected he would get. Well, I don't know if nobody suspected it. The referee out unconscious, Miss Tito covering Orton for the pin, and now with Sergeant Slaughter distracted, the referee half conscious, Cowboy Bob Orton has his feet clearly on the ropes, but the official told the three count, and at that time, Cowboy Bob Orton was absolutely ecstatic. He was momentarily the heavyweight champion of the world. Well, very, very I controversial. I was the only one to think that, uh, Starch. A lot of other people did too, because the referee definitely counted one, two, three. However, the uh, commissioner, uh, Jim Bronzel, and of course, the president of the AWF, Einstein, they both overruled that referee. And once again, we had this belt restarted. What a history-making week this has been. Absolutely. You see Cowboy Bob Orton is stunned there as Jim Brunzel entered the ring, took the championship belt away, and ordered the match restarted. Sheik Adnan LKC can't believe it. The commissioner then ordering Mr. Hughes, ordering Maniac Manny Fernandez 
out of the ringside area. He re-handcuffed Sergeant Slaughter and Sheik Adnan LKC together. There you see the Sarge making sure once again that Sheik isn't going anywhere, much to the Sheik's chagrin. He doesn't like this one bit. No, the Sheik was practically crying there. And I'm pleased we're showing this again because this definitely is, in my mind, a point of controversy. Nice move here by Santana, but really, I don't think it won him the match, although he was given the match. Well, I do believe it did, and you said the referee has the final decision, and that was it right there. Referee Jesse Hernandez, the replacement official, counts off the three count. Tito Santana, great fighting the legs of Cowboy Bob Orton, and again, much to the delight of the fans in attendance and fans certainly all over the world, Tito Santana at the top of the ladder, the champion in the American Wrestling Federation, the wrestlers including Sergeant Slaughter, Charlie Norris, Coco Beware, Conan 2000 is in there, Ronnie Twist, Steve Dahl, they're all celebrating the belt coming back to Santana. Well, I said in the beginning this was a conspiracy by the establishment to get Cowboy Bob Orton out of the way. I still go along with that, and I did try to chase down Einstein and uh, Jim Brunzel. And obviously to no avail once again. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a great week. Next week's lineup, also tremendous. You're going to take a look at one of the great young lions, the sensational Steve Dahl in action. Also, the black top bully with Big Mama. Oh, you certainly can't ignore Big Mama. Also, we'll take a look at America's hero, Sergeant Slaughter, and part of the main event, the Texas Hangman with Missy Hyatt. Missy, take it away. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Boogaloo Brown and the Texas yeah. Hangman. And next yeah. week, you're in the main event in a six-man tag match. That's right, Missy Hyatt. We got Chief Charlie Norris, Billy Two Eagles, and some guy named Conan 2000. And fellas, I got you hooked up with the Super Destroyer. What are your comments on that, uh, Psycho? Uh, killer? Uh, Psycho, Psycho. Super Destroyer, all I got to say to you, boy, is you better be as big and as bad as a Texas hangman. Remember this, boys? When you're stepping together with the Texas hangman, you live by the noose and you're gonna die by the noose. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, that is the main event next week. Six-man tag team action for Lord Alfred Hayes and Ken Resnick and Missy Hyatt. This is Mick Hart. So long, everybody. You've made the right choice with the American Wrestling Federation. So until next week, you're dismissed.